from Local 24. Forecast first from the Local 24 Storm Team, the Mid-South's most accurate forecast. Hey everyone, I'm meteorologist Chelsea Chandler, tracking a chance for rain and storms this morning and through the day. As you look at forecast first, we also are tracking that heat 77 degrees by 8 up to 89 this afternoon. So uh, where we could see some severe weather, where we actually have a severe thunderstorm watch in place, I'll let you know that coming up in a few minutes. Live from WATN, this is a Local 24 Breaking News Alert. Two big breaking news we're following for you this morning. First, a tanker oil spill near Marion on I-55, making a mess out on the roadways. Chelsea is tracking it this morning right now. Chelsea, that area blocked off for now. Yeah, this has been going on since about 11 o'clock last night. We had an 18-wheeler that overturned spilling ethanol. It did catch fire at one point. So you can see the western junction in Arkansas, the 4055 junction, has been uh, closed off for a while if you're trying to head towards St. Louis. So this is in Marion, Arkansas. 55 north and southbound are closed near exit 14 all the way to 64. Uh, so you can see this is going to cause some issues. Some options for you. You can take LH Polk to 77. On um, the north side of it, you can take Clarkdale Road to 77. Regardless, you need to make sure you give yourself some extra time. There's no ETA as to when that will be completely cleaned up. As far as other accidents inside the Memphis Metro, this one's been causing some problems. It's an overturned vehicle that is at uh, Rimbert and Lamar. Lamar itself is pretty slow in each direction. You can use Southern, Castalia, or Cooper. I'm tracking it all with your time saver traffic. Another person is dead following Sunday's deadly wreck in Northeast Memphis. 62-year-old Morris Hands just passed away. The three-car crash happened around 10 Sunday night on Summer Avenue at Trafalgar. Also killed in the wreck was Horned Lake Police Chief Darrell Whaley. Whaley retired from the force two years ago. Also breaking for you this morning, a house caught fire in southeast Memphis early this morning. That happened on Duluth Avenue and Knight Road. Local 24 News was on the scene as firefighters got those flames under control. Take a look. Here's what we know this morning. The fire started around 3 o'clock this morning. Homeowners telling Local 24 News they smelled the smoke, felt the heat, and quickly evacuated their home. Luckily, no one was hurt, but the cause of, of that fire is still under investigation this morning. But fire investigators believe it appears to have started in the ceiling or the roof. We are staying on top of developing news now that we first brought you through our local Memphis app available for download in the Google Play and App Store. Two people are dead following a double shooting in Raleigh. This happened on Egypt Central off of Ridgemont around 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Police say the two men were found shot dead inside the home. Family and investigators were on the scene for hours. Local 24's cameras rolling there. The names of the victims have not been released. No suspect information is available this morning. Coming up on 633 now, turning our attention to Mississippi. The Mississippi Attorney General is launching an internal investigation into the entire Oxford Police Department one week after an officer was charged with murder, all at the mayor's insistence. Officer Matthew Kinney was fired from the force after he was charged in the murder of Dominique Clayton. The Oxford mayor requested an internal review by the state after reports of other officers being suspended or residing in connection to Clayton's murder. During Kinney's court appearance two weeks ago, Clayton's family was fired up. They went into detail about the relationship between the two. We have an officer who's sworn in to protect and serve, and he does the opposite. And then not only that, he takes away a mother from her children, a friend from her family. Um, it just goes a lot further than what, what surfaces. The judge overseeing the case also recused himself following backlash from the family. Coming up on 634, barricades surrounded parts of UT Chattanooga's campus last night as white nationalist Rick Tyler was set to speak. He's the man behind the Make America White Again billboard. Tyler says the point is to call out myths surrounding white nationalism. He says there's nothing wrong with being proud of being white, and he believes our nation was never meant to be a diverse melting pot. We are staying on top of the tornado outbreaks across the country. More than 50 reported nationwide, and we're finally getting a chance to see the extent of the damage in Dayton, Ohio. One person there killed, dozens more hurt. Some people were able to board up their home, and others are planning to stay. Others are also taking their important documents and valuables, staying with friends until they figure out where to go from here. Once again, a Republican congressman is thrown up a roadblock to the disaster aid bill that we've been telling you about. Local 24 News Washington correspondent Anna Wernicke reports on the latest dust up over a bill which would provide billions to help Americans battered by natural disasters. 
and I object. For the second time in less than a week, a lone Republican blocked the House from passing a $19 billion disaster relief bill. This time, it was Kentucky Republican Thomas Massey. The Speaker of this House should have called a vote on this bill before sending every member of Congress on recess for 10 days. Massey objected to a move by Democratic leaders to fast track the bill and pass it while most of Congress is away from the Capitol on a district work period. But House Democratic leader Steny Hoyer says the bill is critical for disaster victims around the country. Frankly, I cannot understand why any member would object to giving relief to so many millions of our citizens who have been badly damaged by natural disasters. The $19 billion disaster relief bill would give money to areas recovering from wildfires, flooding, and hurricanes, including Puerto Rico. It earmarks millions for rebuilding military bases destroyed by storms. It also extends the National Flood Insurance Program, which expires Friday. If we don't pass something on Thursday, people will be unable to ensure their homes against blood. After months of delay, the Senate finally passed the disaster relief bill late last week, 85 to 8, and the president says he'll sign it. Last Friday, it was Texas Republican Chip Roy who stopped the bill cold. This is a $19 billion bill that is not paid for. Hoyer says the delay is ridiculous because the bill will pass overwhelmingly once the House returns next week. In Washington, I'm Anna Warnicke. And our exclusive local 24 Washington Bureau is hard to work on brand new stories for you. Just go to our website, localmemphis.com, click the news tab, then click Washington, D.C. Bureau to get started. 636, the top rate out on a Wednesday, a local safety alert involving rising temperatures outside. MLGW is implementing its no cutoff policy again today because of the heat index of 95 degrees or more. The utility's so called credit care policy means that customers over the age of 60, disabled or on life support, will not be disconnected because of unpaid bills. Coming up on 637, a majority of children of minorities cannot swim in Memphis. And today, Olympic swimmers are here in the Bluff City to try and raise awareness and the importance of knowing how to swim. Local 24 News reporter Jalen Socek is live for us at the Hickory Hills Aquatic Center where today's events kick off. Jalen. John, in a study by USA Swimming, it found that 79% of African-American youth in Memphis cannot swim. That number is at 60% for Latino children, and both of those numbers are higher than the national average. So, at 9, Olympic swimmers will host a kid water safety summit here. This is part of the four-city stop of Make a Splash, part of the USA Swimming Foundation. Their goal is to give more children the opportunity to learn to swim, more importantly, to keep kids safe. The organization says formal Swimming lessons reduce the chance of a child drowning by 88%. Olympians Colin Jones, Elizabeth Basil, and Rowdy Gaines will be there. And at 1.30 to 3 this afternoon, they'll host a community swim lesson at the Davis YMCA outdoor pool. Today's events will end with a pool party at the University of Memphis Aquatics. And this is in collaboration with the Splash Mid-South chapter who celebrates its 10th year. In the last decade, they've been able to provide more than 7,500 free swim lessons or some at a reduced rate for local kids. For now, reporting live in Hickory Hill, Jalen Socek, Good Day Memphis. 6.38 the time for you now. So to come on Good Day this Wednesday. Preservation at all costs. The new plan to save the Queen of Souls birth home. Also for you this half hour, caught on dash cam. A lift driver attacked. Why the passenger started throwing punches? Look at it play up there on the screen. We'll get to that story here in just a few minutes. First, a check of the weather. Meteorologist Chelsea Chandler is here. What are you tracking? Well, I'm keeping an eye not only on the heat, but the chance for severe weather that is continuing to get closer to the mid south. In fact, we have some areas under a severe thunderstorm watch. Who that is and for how long? I've got those details and more coming up after the break right here on Good Day Memphis. Good Day Memphis at 6:30. All right, 642, the top rate off. So glad you're with us here on Good Day Memphis. Meteorologist Chelsea Chandler is watching the radar. Yeah, we are keeping an eye on uh, some cluster of storms in northeastern Arkansas. We do have a severe thunderstorm watch that has been issued for the counties in pink. That is uh, Mississippi and Poinsett County. Uh, also into West Tennessee from Dyer County to Tipton County to Madison County and everywhere in between. So that all goes until noon. 
And that's because of this, again, cluster of storms that already has produced a severe thunderstorm. Uh, you can see just off outside of the area, uh, it actually is dying down a little bit. It was producing close to 100 strikes of lightning about 30 minutes ago, now down to 40. But as you see, we'll take a closer look at that. You can see it is very close, but it does look to me like some of the stronger cells look like they are staying outside of our area headed towards uh, the Missouri boot heel. However, we will probably see uh, some of this rain making its way into Poinsett County pretty soon. So we're going to be watching for that. Let you know of any other issues. Uh, wind, small hail would be a concern with these. So as far as the bigger picture, we have this big system that's continued to plague the country, and that's starting to make its way our direction. This cold front is dipping south, going to be pushing into our area, pushing this moisture in, pushing the storm chances in. The good news is it's weakening as it does make its way closer to us. Uh, but we could definitely see some positive impacts from it as well. Now let's take a look at our temperatures. It's already warm. 77 feels like 79 in Memphis, the surrounding areas. Feel anywhere from uh, the low 70s, 70 degrees in Oxford, all the way up to 81 in Jonesboro. So no matter where you are, it is warm. Uh, but as we get through the day, it won't be quite as bad as it was yesterday. In fact, our high is expected to actually stay in the 80s today, 89, feeling like 92. So it'll still be warm. It just won't be as bad. You'll see a mix of sun and clouds, a 30% chance of rain. A lot of that during the day stays along and north of I-40. As we get through the rest of the afternoon and evening, though, it becomes a little bit more widespread. And we'll take a look at that in a minute. Wide, uh, the winds. Uh, we have those coming in from the southwest 10 to 15 miles an hour, so it could be breezy as well. The relief that I was telling you about that comes with this, it does come with rain, but you see our dew points, they begin to drop. Dew points are how we measure humidity. So we're in the oppressive state today, and we start to drop, and by Friday, 62, that's going to feel much, much better for us. So. As we take a look at this hour by hour, again, the system continuing to move through this morning. As we get into the afternoon, though, it does look like we're really just waiting for the setup for this evening when this starts to push in around 8 o'clock. Really, though, the line coming in uh, that will be more widespread is going to be overnight between about 1 to 4 o'clock in the morning. You see it breaks up, though, in time for the morning commute, and then we see more scattered storms uh, possibility as we get into the afternoon and into the evening on Thursday, though. That will clear out pretty nicely overnight, setting us up for a nice stretch of weather. By the time we start off Friday morning, we're already clear and in the 60s, so you know that it's going to be a little bit more pleasant for us. So on your seven-day forecast, 89 today, again, a 30% chance of rain, 40% chance tomorrow. Where we should be this time of year is about 84, and that's where we'll be on Friday, and it will be less humid. So Friday is actually going to be a really pleasant day, all things considered. Sunshine continues into the weekend, but we start to see these temperatures climbing back into the low 90s by the middle of the week. So we're tracking all of that, keeping you up to date with the latest on Twitter. Make sure you're following us at Local Memphis. As far as the roadways go, we've got two issues we've been continuing to monitor this morning. Most of the interstates look fine. Where we do have a problem is in West Memphis, Arkansas, in the western junction of 40 and 55. If you're trying to travel towards St. Louis, you're going to have a problem. Since 11 o'clock last night, we've had these uh, the interstate shut down after an ethanol spill. An 18-wheeler overturn caught fire as a result, so they do have that closed in each direction. Uh, this is in Marion, 55 from exit 14 to 64. If you're on the south side of this, you can use LH Polk to 277. On the north side, you can use Clarkdale to 77 as well. Inside the Memphis Metro, inside the 240 loop, we actually have an overturned vehicle that's been causing some problems. Tow truck trying to get it out of the way, but we are still seeing delays on Lamar at Rimbert Street. You can use Southern, Castalia, or Cooper as your alternate. I'm keeping an eye on that and keeping you up to date with your time saver traffic. All right, coming up on 646, still to come here on Good Day Memphis, the plan to keep the Queen of Souls birth home in tip top shape. It's next here in three minutes on Good Day Memphis. You're watching Good Day Memphis at 6.30. 649, the time for you now on Good Day Memphis. We're learning more about plans to protect Aretha Franklin's birth home. That home is on Lucy Avenue in South Memphis. In environmental court yesterday, the head of the nonprofit group in charge of taking care of the property told the judge the plan is now to do some basic things like add a new roof and electrical work, but not make it habitable. The hope is that it will give the group more time to get the money needed to fully restore the home. Folks want to help this house and fix it, but nobody showed up. From nonprofits to the city, nobody showed up. So what we're going to do now is just stabilize it for now. People need to step up. If there is an interest, folks need to not talk about it, but be about it. Property has been in environmental court for almost seven years now. The group will be back in court mid-June to present the stabilization plan to the judge. We're going to Virginia now. Four people are dead following a church van crash there. Three others seriously hurt. Investigators say that the church van was pulling into its parking lot before being hit by a truck pulling a trailer loaded with metal. The van flipped several times. Eleven people were inside the van during that wreck. Charges are pending. 
Caught on camera video, you got to see to believe. A Lyft driver in New York says he was scared for his life after a passenger attacked him in his car. It was all caught on the vehicle's dash camera last week. Now, the passenger apparently wanted the driver to speed up, and when he says he couldn't because of traffic, watch what plays out. Fists flying in the car. The driver lost his glasses in the scuffle, even continuing to drive until he could safely pull over. We're going to show it to you at some point. Basically, I was scared for my life. It was just a surreal moment where you're just kind of living outside of your body, and you, I just wanted it over with. Police are still looking for that passenger this morning. The man says he's not sure if he'll continue working as a driver. Can't really blame him. Coming up on 651 tomorrow is the big day. The stage set for the NBA Finals. The Toronto Raptors taking on the Golden State Warriors. It's Toronto's first run in the Finals. Meanwhile, could we see Golden State bring home another championship? Will it be a sweep? That's the big question. The NBA Finals right here on Local 24. Game 1 tomorrow, 8 o'clock. Don't forget about us. Still ahead, Chelsea is back with a check of the forecast for the drive to work. And we have a recap of the day's top news stories before you head out the door. Keep it here. This is Good Day at 651. Local Storm Team Chief Media Memphis at 630. So glad you're with us here on Good Day Memphis 654. The top read. Now let's take a look at today's top news stories. We're staying on top of developing news. Lanes are still blocked on I-55 near Marriott after an ethanol spill overnight. This happened near Mile, Mar Mile Marker 12 just before midnight. One person was hurt. Cleanup of the spill was quick. No word on when those lanes will reopen completely. Also this morning, a house fire in southeast Memphis to tell you about this happened on Duluth Avenue and Knight Road. Local 24 News on the scene as firefighters got those flames under control. Here's what we know right now. That fire started around 3 this morning. Neighbors telling Local 24 News they smelled the smoke and jumped into action. No one hurt. The two people in the home made it out safely. Investigators believe the fire may have started in either the roof or the ceiling. The Mississippi Attorney General is launching an internal investigation into the entire Oxford Police Department one week after an officer was charged with murder. Officer Matthew Kinney was fired for the force after he was charged in the murder of Dominique Clayton. The Oxford mayor requested an internal review by the state after reports of other officers being suspended or resigning in connection to Clayton's murder. The current chairman of the Chevy County Democratic Party gets to keep his seat this morning. This is the second confidence vote for Chairman Michael Harris at an hour-long meeting last night. Harris called the meeting himself to put to rest efforts by the executive committee to remove him over past ethics violations, including charging excessive fees, failure to perform the services he was paid for, and dishonesty. Chelsea is here. She's watching the radar. Yeah, we have a severe thunderstorm watch that is primarily for those counties along and north of I-40 until noon today. Uh, that does include Mississippi and Poinsett County in Arkansas and everywhere from uh, Tipton County all the way up to Dyer County and uh, Haywood County, Madison County in Tennessee. So Crockett County as well, you're in there. Uh, this is due to a system of storms, a cluster of storms that continues to approach the area. The good news is we did not see that severe thunderstorm warning continued into the area, but we are going to keep an eye on that as there is a risk for severe weather. Now, mostly today, you can see pop-up showers. However, uh, we could see some more organized rain late this evening and then overnight, and that becoming a little more widespread, not just to the north. So, overall today, again, uh, we'll be watching for all of that. Your temperatures are going to be in the upper 80s, feeling like the low 90s with a mix of sun and clouds, and that chance for pop-up showers as well as a little bit more as we get through the day. So, we're going to be tracking all of that for you and keeping you up to date. Our news continues at 7 on CW30. Join us there. GMA's next year on Local 24. Make it a good day.